You ready now? You're rolling. Turn to, turn to G. Uh, we got uh, two Ds, two Gs, and a B, which is the major third note in the chord. So we've got a nice open chord, so you don't have to worry about doing anything with the left hand. It's all about the right hand. Now, if you come down and have a look at this piece of paper here, which is, I wrote this out 10 years ago, and it's still relevant. And we've got uh, thumb, T, I, index, thumb, middle, middle finger, right? So we've got thumb, index, middle. And what we're doing, these are the strings on the banjo. This is the G, this is the B, and this is the high string, and this is the D string, the low string, as if I spoke. Well, it's not the low string, it's on the other end of it. <laughs> we've got, it's confusing with banjo because we've got a high string on the bottom of the instrument, so to speak. Right? Anyway, this roll sounds like this. Just, so it's just repeat, repeat, forever. Maybe come and, come and have a look at the actual... Now, when we were just going through this, Paul, your fingers were obviously quite naturally sort of a bit out of control and was kind of flapping around. And of course, you're making life hard for yourself. You really got to try and, you know, place your fingers. Don't You don't have to use picks at all, but... You know, I tend to sit my fingers naturally on the strings like this, and then do not try to, you know, you're gonna try and keep it small because you're gonna be just, you're just gonna to have to go straight back and hit that string again. So if your thumb's out here, you gotta come all the way back to do it. So you might as well get straight into keeping the whole thing small. And it's a repeat, it does a re it's a repeat. So, you know, you learn it once and then I guess you keep learning it until you don't need to learn it anymore and it starts to become something that you just do and when you know that role so you can you know uh, watch television or talk to somebody or think about something else while you're doing it it's got to be even one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four when you can really maybe count and do something else while you're doing it, you can move this roll. And what you do is the first part of the roll you start these two strings and what we're going to do is we're going to alternate and move down to these two strings so you get this effect. They're the low strings and so you're alternating two of the notes. come back to this piece of paper I'll write it in for you Paul so you can remember there's the two alternating notes right so you start da 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 and then you drop down to the low ones back to the banjo so then you've got a sense of a bass note going da When you know that roll really well, you should be able to just test yourself, see if you can play it on one string. You know, because it's a pattern, and it's more important, the pattern is more important than what you're hearing. Uh, and it's to the point where actually when you're practicing, maybe put your hands over the string, so... So you just hear the rhythm, because these notes are going to change. And every, as soon as you start doing things with the left hand, I mean, even if you put your finger straight across on, uh, on the fourth fret, you're going to get a whole different set of notes, same pattern, slide it up. So, so what I'm saying is kind of dangerous to get hooked on hearing, because that's actually, that's going to change as soon as you start doing things with your left hands. It's more about the pattern. Practice the pattern. Uh, and that's the first banjo roll, and it's, it's, it's one that a guitar player will find uh, straightforward enough. We'll go on to the next rolls a little bit later on because they become, they what really make the banjo stand out.